And the second speaker is uh, Paul Duckwell from the School of Mathematics and Statistics of the University of Sheffield. Uh, he's going to speak about Bayesian inference for diffusion and peace by deterministic models of animal movement. Please, Paul, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, so, can you hear me and can you see the slides okay? Yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, um, I want to talk about a couple of different approaches to um, movement modeling and um, the statistical issues that, that uh, arise when, when we look at um, continuous time movement modeling. Um, and then at, at the end, I'll, ju I'll just um, try and link that back a little bit to the idea of, of selection that um, uh, fits in quite nicely with what, what Nevin has, has you know, talked about, although with a, a very different perspective. Um, so, as, as Mevin has already uh, outlined, we're talking about um, movement data, so a sequence of, of locations over time, typically in, in two dimensions. Um, and the kind of standard off the shelf way of, of thinking about movement data uh, typically thinks about modeling it in discrete time with a time scale imposed by the data collection. Um, and often by summarizing the, the data in terms of a sequence of step lengths and turning angles. Um, so you can imagine sort of summarizing this little uh, collection of, sort of toy data by the sequence of, of step lengths and then the, the turning angles between one segment and, and the next. And from that perspective, uh, an approach that's usually taken or often taken is to think about um, hidden Markov models. Um, and so the idea is that there's an underlying discrete behavioral state, and that affects the, the properties of the movement while the animal's in that state. And that has some, some uh, limitations because, because of the, the discrete time nature of it. In particular, the, the interpretation of parameters is very uh, specific to the choice of, of that time interval. But nevertheless, those, those models are quite widely used. One of the, the reasons being that um, algorithmically, uh, they're very fast to fit. I mean, if you do it naively, they're incredibly difficult to fit because you have to think about all possible sequences of behaviors over the, the observations. But there is uh, a technique using the forward algorithm that recursively calculates the likelihood averaging over all possible sequences of states. And so that makes it um, very fast, in fact, to evaluate the likelihood for a given set of parameters. And although in reality, we'll typically be thinking in, in two dimensions, schematically, if we think in, in 1D, um, like the, the picture I've got there at the bottom, um, it's a bit easier to see what's going on over, over time. So um, part of what I want to talk about is, is motivated by the question whether we can recover some of those advantages computationally while thinking in, in um, continuous time. And so um, what I'm, one, one common approach in thinking about continuous time movement is to think about diffusion models. And it's very natural then to think about, again, about an underlying hidden behavioral state. Call it switching diffusion, where all the time the animal is following the diffusion process, but the behavior that, that drives it is switching from time to time. And um, if we do that, then um, the times of those transitions between behaviors typically are going to take place in between the observations. There's no reason for them to coincide with the observation times. So the the good news about a continuous time approach is that it doesn't require regular observations and it copes very naturally with missing observations and so on. But from an inference point of view, it's quite challenging because the likelihood, to evaluate the likelihood, you need to reconstruct the whole history of the um, behavior in between observations. So generally we're talking about MCMC on a very complex um, space. So can we get can we get anywhere with 
trying to steal ideas from hidden Markov models. Well, there is such a thing as a continuous time hidden Markov model, but the, the off the shelf version of that um, is, is no good for this purpose because it, it has built in what's known as the snapshot property. That is that um, we assume that observations depend only on the current state. Whereas here, our, our observations are, are effectively the movements between one observation and the next, which naturally depend on behavior of the whole of that interval. The way of trying to address that is to say, we look at a process of potential switching times. Okay. We think of, of sampling a, a, a random collection of, of times of potential switches over the, the interval that we're interested in. And if we condition on those, then we can allow the changes in behavior to potentially take place at those, at those times. So at each potential switching time, the behavior can either switch to something different or it could remain the same. If we do that, if we condition on those potential switching times, then the conditional process is a hidden markup model. So we simply um, apply the forward algorithm to average over all possible sequences of, of behaviors, we can calculate the likelihood without having to sample the behaviors explicitly. Is, is that a, a valid representation of, of the process? Can we write it in that way? Well, well, we can. And the reason that works is because of an idea known as uniformization. So what we do is that we think of those potential switches as forming some homogeneous process, homogeneous Poisson process typically. And then because we're allowing the behavior either to switch or stay the same at each time point, we're representing the uh, so continuous time changes in state as a kind of thin version with a thinning that depends on the parameters of the process um, of that homogeneous process. So what we can do is condition on the, um, the realization of that homogeneous process, we can just use the forward algorithm to evaluate the likelihood. And then the sampling of the homogeneous Poisson process still has to be done with an, an MCMC framework. So we're using MCMC, but over a, a much simpler, much lower dimensional state space. We only have to sample times and not behaviors. So that is a much faster uh, algorithm and scales much better with the, the size of the, of the data set. Um, and so that starts to open up these, these switching diffusion models to, to um, much much more natural application and and, and uh, realistic sized data sets. And just to kind of um, illustrate that, I'll show um, part of the analysis of a very small data set on uh, Kinkajou movement. These are observations taken normally every 10 minutes, but there's some variation in the timing and also some missing data. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, Kinkajou, this is what a kinkajou looks like. Um, and uh, so what I've done is take those observations and fit a two-state switching diffusion model, um, basically just using the simplest possible kind of model where we've got Brownian motion but with different diffusion rates, just fitted a slow state and a fast state. And we can use that sort of conditional hidden Markov model representation to, to fit the model. Of course, there's then all sorts of ways in which we could interrogate that model, but just as an example, um, this is looking at the probability of being in each of the, the two states over time. Um, the, uh, the vertical the dotted lines indicate the times of the observations, but we can reconstruct that probability uh, between observations as well as, as at them. And um, you can see that that, although we can never be absolutely sure which of the two states the animal's in, um, we can 
we can get quite good probabilities at any any given time that it's likely to be in the fast or the slow state. So the other type of, of continuous time movement model I wanted to, to, to talk about, rather than diffusion, is the idea of a, a piecewise deterministic process. So a piecewise deterministic Markov process is one that moves in a deterministic way, except at um, countably many uh, times of, of events that change the, the way in which the movement goes on. And I'm going to stick to the idea of a piecewise linear model where the animal moves with a constant velocity in between events. Um, and again, in reality, we're interested in, in 2D data, but there's a kind of uh, sort of sketch of, of what's going on in 1D at the bottom of the slide. Um, so we're looking at essentially straight line movement with uh, changes in, in direction from time to time, changes in speed and direction. Um, and we're trying to reconstruct that in a way that uh, at least approximately matches some data points. Um, and these kind of models have been used as conceptual models and, and, and fitted to data approximately um, quite a lot in the biological literature. But I'm interested in the sort of time scale where it makes sense to try and fit those models exactly. So um, to formulate the model in, in 2D, essentially we think about turning angles based on these um, line segments of, of the movement process. We model those as following some circular distribution. And then we think about the speeds. And for reasons which I'll, I'll explain in a second, I'm going to take those to, to follow a Rayleigh distribution, which is a, a same as a Weibull with scale parameter, uh, with shape parameter two. And so the speeds could be independent or it's actually easy to build in a, a Markov dependence on the speeds as well, because the joint Rayleigh distribution has, has nice properties and it's very easy to sample from conditional. So if we set up a, a 2D model in, in that way, um, it's then very easy to, to work out the bearings, which are just the sort of cumulative sum of the turnings, turning angles. And then we can get the uh, locations at any given time with a little bit of uh, straightforward trigonometry. Now, assuming that we start with a, uh, a uniform uh, distribution over the, uh, the bearing, then the, the future marginal distributions for, for bearing will all be uniform. And if we think about the marginal distributions for the speeds, um, take those to be to be Rayleigh, um, then the marginal distributions for the velocities turn out to, to be bivariate norm. Okay, so one way of thinking about what we're doing is we're setting up a, a model in terms of um, steps of turns, but which has a normal distribution for the velocities, but it's dependent structure over time. As, as, as this sort of slightly more mechanistic uh, interpretation. So how do we do inference for, for models of that sort? Um, well, the challenging part is not the parameter inference, which is straightforward, but the reconstruction of the actual trajectory. Where did these turns take place? What were the turning angles? What are the speeds? And so I'll, I'll talk a bit about that aspect of an algorithm for exact inference for these models. Um, and because the, the numbers of these events where changes in velocity take place um, is varying, we, we need a, a reversible jump, MCMC algorithm. And I'll talk about the, the key part of that when we're updating over an interval between times, beginning and end times TB and, and TE. So the first thing is to think about resampling the, the events to update the trajectory. Um, and the way we do that is in, in two stages. We think of the observations within that interval as defining a set of sub-intervals. And we sample new values for the numbers of turns in each of those sub-intervals. And we can do that relatively easily by just sort of doing a random walk on the integers um, for those counts, those numbers of events. 
And then the times of those events, there's, there's two cases. If you think about the sort of geometry of these, these line segments, um, in some cases, the timing of a, of a turn event is essentially determined by what's going on in the surrounding subintervals. In that case, essentially, we, we construct a proposal by saying, so what would the time have to be in a sort of error-free case? And then we add on a little bit of local uniform noise. Otherwise, we just propose the times uniformly over the, their subintervals. So the real the real crux of it is how we sample a new set of velocities. And we, we do that in a kind of Metropolis Hastings way. We sort of make a proposal and then accept or reject, but with quite an elaborate construction of the proposal distribution in two steps. So um, first of all, what we do is we think about sort of an approximation to the forward model, the, the, the movement model itself. So we approximate that with a, a joint Gaussian distribution, which tries to capture the right marginal distributions, the right, um, approximately the right correlation structure. But because of doing that as a joint Gaussian, we then have the option of very easily conditioning on the constraints, which are that the process has to end up at the, the right point. And also we know that it goes close to the observations. So we condition that sort of forward model to get a, a joint Gaussian that takes into account the data. And that's what we use as the proposal distribution. So we then have a, a tractable proposal distribution informed by the data that looks quite a lot like the, the, the underlying model. And it turns out if we do that, then um, the accept or reject uh, calculation for that is quite easy to do. Um, so just to kind of show that in action on, again, some, some toy data. So this is the uh, a little bit of raw data. This is, and, and that's just joined up in the, in the kind of naive and biologically uh, meaningless way, but just literally linking one observation to the next. If we start to sample reconstructions of, of the, the paths in the way that I've just sketched out, then we get something like this. And you can see that, again, we've got straight line paths that go th very close to the data points, but in between the data points, they, they vary quite a lot in where they go and in the, the number of turns that they take. And if we, if we follow that up, um, then we can get a, a bigger sample, again, by, by MCMC of reconstructions of that, that little segment of, of paths. Paul, two more minutes, Paul. Okay. Um, so just to just to sort of uh, finish off, I just wanted to, to say a little bit about the implications of this for the the kinds of applications that that, uh, that Mevin was actually talking about about resource selection. Um, and I mean, I'm going to skip over that very introductory slide. But the basic idea of the the approach that that we want to take is that we want to try and get continuous time movement models that correspond to a, a parametric description of the, the utilization distribution of individual animals um, in that form that, that Mevin outlined, where you have a, 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 an exponential form with some selection parameters. And very briefly, um, there are a couple of approaches that, that we could take using um, that are inspired by an analogy with MCMC algorithms moving around a target distribution. And one of those is, is to think in terms of a Langevin diffusion, um, which is simply a diffusion model where the, the drift term determined by the um, gradient of the log of the, the target distribution. But then another more recent um, class of continuous time MCMC algorithms is uh, the bouncy particle sampler and variations on that, which I'll just explain very briefly. Um, 
the idea is that it's a piecewise linear process that um, has changes in velocity, which are determined by the log of the, sorry, the gradient of the log of the target distribution. So this has been developed as, a, as an MCMC algorithm for exploring a target distribution, but it links very closely with the, the movement models that I was talking about that are also piecewise linear. Um, so that gives us a framework for thinking about um, mechanistic movement models in the sense that they capture this sort of straight line, step and turn behavior, which can be um, linked to a tractable parametric um, utilization distribution. And just to, to finish off, um, there's a, an illustration of a, a stimulation from exactly such, such a model. So we can think of this as exploring some target distribution. The, the, large, the movement starts at that large circle on the, on the left-hand side, just here. And then we have stars indicating random small changes in direction. Um, and the squares represent points where the animal has uh, essentially reversed its direction in response to the fact that it was moving downhill in terms of its uh, modeled utilization distribution. And uh, I'll, I'll stop there and view the, the time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and um, let me just check if there is any question for a, a quick uh, answer. If we have one minute, I just was yes. going to ask, um, could, how, how important is it that it depends on the potential switching times being a Poisson or stochastic at all? Okay. Um, it depends on being able to regard those switching times as a thin version of some sort of homogeneous process. Um, and I mean, it requires that because that underlying process needs to not depend on the on the current state. Um, so it doesn't have to be Poisson. Um, in principle, you could have some other sort of stationary uh, point process. Um, and it's not a big constraint on the, the actual switching times because the thinning of those from that homogeneous process can, can depend on, on any function of the, the parameters. Um, so, I mean, I've tended to look at cases where, given the current behavior, the rate is is fixed. Okay, so the simplest kind of continuous time Markov chain representing switching behavior, but that doesn't have to be the case at all. Um, I've also looked at some examples where it depends in a more complicated way on on absolute time. So you have some sort of periodicity, periodicity built in, um, but you could also uh, allow it to be semi-Markov or, or, or depend on some other variables. Thanks. Uh, thanks again, Paul. Uh, 